today. I am thrilled to be joined again by the incredible Samantha Pregenzer of Simply Organized. Sam has found much success in the organizing world, but it doesn't come without a cost. Today, she opened up about the growing pains of entrepreneurial life. And you know, sometimes balancing multiple business projects and multiple kids schedules is just not that pretty and finding time for self care becomes a bit of a chess game. Clearly, though, she is finding a way to make it work. I hope that this candid behind the scenes conversation encourages you. You're listening to the Pro Organizer Studio Podcast with Jen Obermeyer. Thank you for joining in. Jen makes it her mission to broaden the horizons of savvy businesswomen in the organizing industry by instilling confidence and inspiring authenticity. She is a devoted business coach and founder of the Inspired Organizer Program. Each week, you'll gain new insight into strategies designed specifically for professional organizers. And now, let's get started. Well, welcome back to the Pro Organizer Studio podcast, guys. This is Jen, and I have Sam Pregenzer back on the podcast. Hi, Sam. Hi. So Sam and I did an interview together. Oh my gosh, it's been a year and a half or almost two years ago now. Um, that is reposted basically as an, as one of the earlier podcast episodes, if you guys want to go check that out. But I have Sam back on today to just sort of like check in and see how life is going. So at the time of this recording, it's, it's late August. We have just been chatting for a few minutes before starting this podcast uh, recording. And my kids went back to school yesterday. We were kind of talking about like how crazy summer was. <laughs> how crazy was your summer, Sam? <laughs> It was crazy. It was, I had a lot going on. Okay. What did you do to keep your kids entertained? Well, we moved, so that was entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> um, they had a couple camps that they did, and we did a lot of, um, you know, once we got settled here at the new house, we had a lot of friends over. So we did a lot of play dates and just kept their, their social calendar busy, and uh, we did a few little trips. That's fun. Yeah. Those are good memories. Yeah. Those are really great memories. And, and now are they back mm -hmm. to school already? Are they about to start? They went back officially a week ago today. So we're just getting into the, we're trying to put schedules together and get our routines back in order. And, you know, because we're in a new house, things have changed. Um, as you can imagine, as an organizer, we had a whole system at the old house where when you came in, this is where your backpack went. This is where your shoes went. And then we had a routine for the evening where, you know, clothes were laid out or lunch stuff was here or there. And now we're trying to find out where, where are these spaces now and getting the new routines in place. And so we're, we're, we're in the throes of ironing that out. Yeah. And do you find that kind of fun, even when you're doing it for yourself? Yes. I thrive off of routines. So, and I, I think my kids do as well. It just takes them a little while to get into the swing of it, but we have three different schools this year. Oh, wow. Three different start times and end times. I have a freshman in high school now. There's just, there's a lot of other things at play. So we'll get there. It's just, you know, it's been a week. So we're, we're getting <laughs> some, we're, we're going to figure this out. <laughs> So I was just telling Sam, you guys, that it's only been a day for me or like, hello, 24 hours. Oh. And I am honestly... How old are your kids? Mine are third grade and now sixth grade. So this is my first time having more than one school. Mm. And so, you know, my, my reality as of yesterday morning is, okay, <laughs> you know, exciting time to get back in the office and start focusing again. And all of the stuff that I had sort of, you know, pushed off until the kids got back to school, it all kind of hit me all at once. And I honestly, you know, I know I talk a lot about the ups and downs of entrepreneurial life. Like yesterday, I thought I was going to be so energized by finally having a whole day to myself. And it honestly kind of sidelined me. I was just like, this is just maybe the, the overwhelming feeling of all those things. and not that I don't know how to organize it, not that I don't know where to start, but it's just sort of like facing that mountain again. Um, you, you know, that's, I, I'm not going to say it doesn't happen. It, it happens. Yeah, 
so Sam, Sam said, she said, she said dealing with her summer felt a little bit like things coming in every direction, yes. trying to run a business at the same time. Yes. It was hard. It was a tough, it was a tough summer because at the, the onset of summer, we had to move. So there was that. So I had to take the time off of work to mm -hmm. pack us up, then unpack us and kind of make the home, our new home a little bit, make it feel a little bit settled for the kids. So they felt like they could find things that they needed. And when friends came over, we knew where everything was. And just me, I, I don't want visually to see any boxes around. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I carved out that time. And then, you know, just having them around and, and not having a routine was tough. Yeah. Do you feel that that like really, truly mentally and physically drains you, even though yes. it's just the not having the routine, the not, ha and, and that's probably a little bit of what I was feeling yesterday is that I knew I had a to-do list, but I didn't really kind of pre-plan how I was going to go about it. And I think that that's why I felt that way yesterday was just like, I tried to jump into it too quick. And so then I was like, oh shit, like, no, <laughs> not ready. Yeah. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> it was, it was hard to find because my kids are older, you know, when they were younger and I could just put them in camps and they'd be pretty happy. But now that they're much older, especially, you know, my, my incoming freshman was not going to want to go to camps. Right. So yeah. He, he was going to be here, <laughs> but it was hard to find the time because they were here so much to work on client projects. And then there's another wing to my business, which is blog writing and writing for company partnerships, trying to find the time where it was quiet so I could focus and write, or I could take the photos and edit them. Um, it was really, really difficult. And mm -hmm. also the nature of my business with clients is every project is individualized for them, meaning everything down to the bins that we purchase and I really need that time alone in the office to kind of focus on their home, their space, their aesthetic, because that is how I source the product. And so I kind of need that time to look at different types of bins and products and then also planning out the measuring and how are these things going to fit and what is that game plan going to look like when we show up at their house? And that's typically a few hours of work and trying to find that quiet time during the summer was really hard. And then also finding the time to get out of the house to actually do the project for the clients. Um, that was, that was challenging too, because they were all here. So <laughs> yeah. summer is it's, I find it's getting tougher the older they get because again, they just, they don't want to be, at a camp. They want to be at home and they want to have their friends over. And I love that this is the house they want to be at. They, they don't want to take off and go to other, to somebody else's yeah. home. I, I love that. But on the other hand, I was like, <laughs> everybody out. <laughs> I totally, totally get it. So I know you said it was easier when they were a little bit younger. Uh, you know, has summer typically always felt like that kind of weird season for you? Or do you think that just your, your business is growing at the same time that your kids are wanting to kind of, you know, be more independent and be around you. And you said your team is growing and you guys are trying to figure out systems. Like how would you kind of, how do you wrap your brain around all of that right now? It's tough. <laughs> well, our team is trying to figure it out because we've created, you know, it's, as I was saying, it's such an individualized approach to each family that we work for. We're trying to find out what would help streamline it and make it simpler so everybody knows what their role is. Like I have an assistant who, once everything's been purchased and I place my order at various stores around town, she runs around and picks up everything. She gets it either delivered to me or delivered to the site that we'll be working at. She also handles all the returns, but you know, just for an example, for a workflow, my next connection for her would be, okay, well, now that you've handled the purchase, the pickup and the return, can you then go into QuickBooks and invoice them for the materials? So I don't have to do that. And then I can go into the invoice later and add our hours that we were there or the design fee. So we're, mm -hmm. we're trying to streamline those things. So 
for summer, it's been interesting because 95% of my clients are families. And in the first couple of years of running the business, summer was like crickets. Nothing was happening because nobody wants to organize when their kids are home for the summer. It's pointless. Everybody's there. Things get messed up as soon as I leave. One of the um, requests that we have of clients is um, not only that they have no construction going on while we're there, no pets in the space, but also no children because mm -hmm. everything comes out, as, as you know, everything comes out of whatever space we're in. And it's really tough to organize when we have little people running around and especially if it's food or a garage and we have like big things that are coming out that are not safe we request that the children aren't in the in that space that we're working in or in the space that we're sorting and decluttering in. So it has been interesting that for the last at least four or five summers, it's been one of the busiest seasons of the year. And um, what happens is families go on a vacation and then we can come in and work by ourselves, which is great. And I love doing that. I love doing that type of work where we have full freedom to be in the house and nothing's in the way, but trying to find the time to do that with my own kids and managing my own life, that's really tough. And I want to capture them while they're motivated to have the project completed. Yeah. Because then once the school year starts, maybe they're going to be in a different season of life and they're going to say, well, I'll just put it off until later. And then, you know, there's also, there's that scarcity where you think, am I not going to, you, you don't want to let that project go because you're, well, what if there isn't another project that comes in? You, you get that fear. That never happens. There's always another project there to work on. There's always another client coming in that'll fill that space. But I still struggle with that sometimes where I'm like, but they're here right now and they're motivated and I'm motivated, but I can't get to them. So it can be a little stressful in the summer. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now, the other thing about summer that keeps us busy is we handle a lot of unpacking and getting people organized after a move. And people tend to move the most during the summer because their kids aren't in school. So we get a lot. We did quite a few this summer of just people moving and they just need help unpacking on the other end. So um, that keeps us busy. Oh, yeah. And I think it's, you know, to the point of workflow and setting up your infrastructure in your business, that's gonna happen over time. And there's gonna be different phases throughout your business where you may need something to be different and you can focus on that and get it fine-tuned. But honestly, day to day, there's always something that I feel like we can be doing better. Mm. Mm -hmm. I just try and tackle it as soon as it pops up. You know, like the example with, my assistant who does the pickups and returns, it's like, oh, okay, well, this makes sense. So why don't we go ahead and shift this onto your plate now? So it's off of mine. And I think that must be really comforting for a lot of our listeners out there, especially organizers who are more in the beginning stages of business to hear Sam say that even at this stage, mm -hmm. she always sees room for improvement right? Always. Every day. <laughs> and that, that feels, you know, that that's normal and that you're always going to see ways to be more efficient or more productive, especially as your team is growing because mm -hmm. they're there to help you. But I can definitely attest to the fact that you have to slow down and help them learn how to help you. And so that feels like an extra project on top of everything uh, it's else. It's so hard. Yeah. Yeah. But so it's kind of like, this is like gr behind the scenes growing pains with Samantha. <laughs> yes. There's your title for the podcast. There, there you go. I love it. So Sam, um, Sam mentioned too, uh, while we we're chatting that she also really wanted to touch on some of the more fun aspects of organizing and things that she has been doing recently. So Sam, what is a fun project or maybe just fun, even new tip that you have learned recently that you could share? Oh my goodness. There's so much. The most fun projects I've had recently are a few pantries that were very, very challenging because of the space itself being an awkward size and awkward shape that 
the solution came by way of just adding shelves. And that's like exactly what I love doing. It doesn't always have to be product that solves the problem. It could be something as simple as the addition of more shelving. And those are the type of projects that get me really excited where I can walk in, I see the challenge, I see why the client is frustrated and kind of working through that. That's kind of my sweet spot is figuring out those challenging spaces. And, you know, it's sort of unconventional. My approach to it is, well, I don't think you need more bins or more baskets. It's actually, you just need more shelves or we need yeah. to just tweak this part of the structure in here and it'll be fine. And um, those are the fun projects that I've enjoyed doing lately. And there, there've been a lot of them and some of them don't get me wrong. Some of them do throw me. We have a couple right now where I've even told the client, it may take me four or five weeks to really come up with something that's going to work because it's that challenging of a space. And then we have a couple that are in rental homes. So we're limited on what we can do because they're, they don't own the home they're renting. So that's also a challenge, but um, yeah, that's, those have been fun. What else has been in the works for Simply Organized and Sam Pergenzer since the last time we chatted? Since the last time we talked, I am now a field editor with Better Homes and Gardens. And I Ooh, okay, tell us what that means exactly. It's very fun. Um, very, very, very excited. So uh, the editor of one of their publications is called Secrets of Getting Organized. And the editor, Brian Kramer, reached out to me. And that magazine, they really want the spaces in the magazine to be relatable and real and for their readership to be able to connect with the stories and the spaces that they're seeing and how we solve the problems. And it just could not have been a better fit for this business because that's exactly what we do. And it meant everything to me. Just what a great fit it was that it came together that way naturally. But Essentially, what it is to be a field editor is I can submit any project that we've done. And if they see that it's a good fit, then they will say, yes, we love it. We would love to put it in the magazine. And all we have to do is get the client okay. And then I'll fill out some paperwork and send it in. And then it ends up in the magazine. There's a writer who writes the article. Is that one of the ones that comes out like quarterly? Yes, that issue comes out quarterly. In the spring that happened. So they saw a closet that I had done where, again, I added shelves. That was the only edit I made to this closet. They put that one in the magazine and then they saw a garage that I had done a year before that. And they said, we would love to come out and shoot the entire garage for the magazine, like an eight page spread of this garage. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this is incredible. So he came out and took me through the process of actually staging the space, which was really challenging and hard. He was out here for about a week and they had their photographer from San Francisco come out to photograph it and every wall in this garage was perfected for the magazine shoot. So again, because it's a quarterly publication that comes out, it's not so intense. And it's usually once or twice a year that they're mm -hmm looking. So that's been exciting. That is awesome. That definitely falls exciting. under the category of <laughs> fun. I know challenging is that definitely comes along with all of it, but you know, some of the fun parts of expanding your business. Yes. Yes. And it, it definitely feels, I pinch myself and I, I mean it when I say that to be considered an expert and a pro and to be featured in the back of that magazine as in their meet the pro section you have to take a moment and step back and say, this is unbelievable. It's very hard for me to compliment myself and kind of take a moment to pat yourself on the back and take a moment yeah. to like, just take a deep breath and say, this is why I do it. And it's my passion. It makes me happy. It yeah. fulfills me and look, it's impacting other people to the point where it's in a magazine and it's looked at as valuable by the editors of this magazine and they want me to be a part of it. And, um, it's, it's definitely been grounding, but I, I do work really hard. 
I work really, really hard. So to see that it, it does feel good. Yeah. It's very validating, I think. And like you said, being able to like acknowledge yourself for all, for all the hours. It is important to kind of take like, Oh, okay. I'm doing the right. This is exactly where I need to be. This is exactly what I'm meant to be doing. Especially when the editor of the magazine reaches out to you and says, we really want to work with you. It's like, okay, I'm doing something right here. That's awesome. Okay. So also you have, um, renamed or rebranded the client side of your business slightly. Yes. Yes. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yes. So we rebranded the client services side of our business to So Home, um, formerly Simply Organized. We wanted the business name to be trademarked because eventually my, one of my bigger dreams is to have product and other partnerships potentially, but in order to do that, I needed a registered trademark and Simply Organized already is a registered trademark. So we went through the process of working with a marketing expert and she helped us come up with, you know, more than just the new business name. She helped us come up with all the verbiage behind it. You know, what is our mission statement? What do we do? What do we stand for? And that was, that was an awesome process to go through. So we did that and through that we came up with So Home. And then I worked with our attorney who helped guide us through the process of getting the name trademarked. So the client side of the business is now called So Home. And the blog side will continue as Simply Organized. Awesome. And you said you were trying to find time to do blogging and like brand collaborations and that kind of thing during Mm -hmm. the summer. So you are still doing a good bit of that, right? Yes, there's a fair amount. You know, we're very particular about the company partnerships. We had a great run with Lowe's. Um, Mm. We had an exclusivity contract with them for about eight months, and it was really fun to do projects for them monthly. And so that one recently ended, and um, we have a lot of other fun companies that we're working with now. But we always want it to be a win-win. So um, I'm taking on a little less than I used to do, but, um, less is better. Okay. So last but not least, you did mention too, that you moved, (laughs) you sold your house and you moved this summer. So that was, that's been a big change too, huh? Yes. That was a big change moving. So, um, I had, I went through a divorce a couple of years ago and through the process of that, we had to sell the house. So there's some transition, but I'm excited to start organizing and designing and, you know, decorating here at the new house. And, um, the first two spaces I'm working on, of course, number one is the garage. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) The garage is number one. And then number two is my new office, which has a very interesting wallpaper at the moment. (laughs) It's a little loud for me. So I'm going to get it all set up. I'm Some people who have seen my old office that I did at my old house, um, I loved that office so much. And I still have the desk here. It's in a different room, but it doesn't fit in this office. So I'm just trying to figure out my space, like desktop space and what the walls are going to look like so that it also photographs beautifully when I'm sharing it on social media and on the blog and stuff. So. That's so interesting. Um, (laughs) You know, I I know like (laughs) with your business and wanting to share projects and it's, it's kind of like maybe a blessing and a curse that you get to do some new projects and maybe show some transformations, but also it's like your life now really still, it it has to revolve around like natural light and everything (laughs) looking Instagram worthy. So we look forward for sure to um, seeing what you're going to do with that room. I'm sure it's going to be awesome. Uh. I'm, well, I'm looking forward to seeing it too. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So there's there's been a lot of change since we since we last talked. I mean, a lot of good things. Mm-hmm. Of oh, good absolutely. Things, a lot of growth. A lot of new projects, changes, fine tuning things in the business. Mm-hmm. Like I said, taking on fewer partnerships, more just more focused. And I'm now in a place where, um, cause companies just reach out to me with interest in partnering. Well, now I would like to target companies mm. that I would like to work with. So we're putting together a media kit and I hired a new marketing gal to kind of help start targeting some 
companies. And that's, that's kind of fun too. Well, that is awesome. Okay. So Sam, you totally make it look like you just superwoman and get it all done all the time. How yeah. do you <laughs> get time for yourself? And are you looking forward to maybe like slowing down just a teeny tiny bit? Like what season is slow for you? I think the slow season might be just like the weeks leading up to Christmas. Yeah. I think that's, that's it. Cool. Cause I think families yeah. are so busy doing getting ready for Christmas with kids and, Mm -hmm. you know, the holiday time, because then, you know, January one hits and they're ready to get rid of everything that they just bought (laughs) and get (laughs) organized. So that's really the only slow time. You know, it's interesting. Um, you know, that topic of work life balance, I've heard there is no such thing. And I, I feel like that's true. At least right now in my life, there's, there's none of that. There's no balance. Mm -hmm. You have to try to find the balance in the day to day because mm-hmm. one day is going to be crazy. And the next day you may find a little more balance. And I was even just thinking this morning, my only time today was when I was in the shower and I had to really soak in that time. Even if you're only getting that five minutes in the shower to meditate or just clear your mind. I know, for many people you get in the shower or you get in the car and that's exactly when things start coming to mind that you want to like write down and try and control that urge and just take a moment to yourself when you can, because right now it's rapid fire coming at me and I don't have the downtime that I need. And I think that's partly due to the fact that school is just getting started and I'm just coming out of the summer. I think in the next couple weeks, I may find a little bit more balance. And so I'm kind of holding on to that. And the other thing I do is I'm kind of honest with my kids. I tell them at the end of the day, if I, if I need 30 minutes to myself for a little bit, so I can go walk on the treadmill, go for a walk outside, go in my room and close the door, listen to a podcast, you know, do some sort of meditation app, you know, whatever I feel is going to refuel me in that moment. My kids understand that. So, um, you know, just finding little bits of time when you need it. Yeah, absolutely. Your kids are a little older than mine were uh, obviously when I was in my single mom years, but here's my best tip for you. Okay. I just say to them, or specifically to my youngest one, is this how you want to use up my patients today? (laughs) And he like really sits and thinks about it. And he's like, oh man, it's limited. Is this how I want to use it up? I don't think so. And then he's like, all right. That's awesome. <laughs> so, I mean, you could try it with it. a high schooler. I cannot tell you how that will go, but yeah, yeah there you go. Well, Sam, thank you so, so much for coming on to the podcast. Love this format and just being able to, to just have this like virtual kind of coffee date with you. And I appreciate I you flowing down to talk to us and share some of the behind the scenes because um, this is the part that I love the business and the person behind the business. Love what you're doing. And I'm so proud. I want to tell you, I see you and I validate you for all of this great work that you're doing and you deserve all this recognition for sure. No, you're sweet. Thank you. All right. Tell everybody, just in case this is their first time hearing you or meeting you, where they can find you um, to connect with you, uh, follow you on Instagram, find your blog and all that. Tell them um, all the details. Okay. Well, on Instagram, the handle is simply organized and the blog can be found at simplyorganized.me. Dot me. Mm-hmm. Awesome. All right. Well, we'll look for you in the Better Homes and Garden and um, uh, just all the other cool stuff that you're doing. Thank you so much, Sam. And we really appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Pro Organizer Studio podcast. If you'd like to learn more about time-saving services and resources for professional organizers, visit www.proorganizerstudio.com. And if you'd like to get Jen's roadmap to success for launching and growing your professional organizing business, go straight to www.poroadmap.com.